If anyone says that the guilt is remitted to every penitent sinner after the grace of justification has been received and that the debt of eternal punishment is so blotted out that there remains no debt of temporal punishment to be discharged either in this world or in the next in purgatory before the entrance to the kingdom of heaven can be opened, let him be anathema. They do not preach the same gospel. What Catholicism could not accomplish by burning genuine Christians alive and martyring thousands, if not millions, all in the name of amassing power for herself and becoming the world's supreme religious authority, she looks to be achieving through devious plans disguised as ecumenism. We made two videos about Protestant churches bowing down to the papacy. If you wish to watch those videos, check out the link in the description. By the way, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe and enable the bell icon to receive notifications when we post new weekly videos. Help us spread the end time messages to our world. Like and share our videos. Thanks for your support. Succede come nei quartieri fra noi, no? nei quartieri ci sono famiglie che si vogliono e famiglie che non si vogliono, famiglie che si uniscono e famiglie che si separano e noi siamo un po', mi permetto la parola, separati. Io ho la nostalgia che questa separazione finisca e ci dia la comunione e pregare al Signore perché ci unisca tutti. What exactly is ECT? ECT, also known as Evangelicals and Catholics Together, the Christian Mission in the Third Millennium, is an ecumenical document developed and signed in 1994 by prominent Evangelicals and Catholic leaders in the United States. It was back in 1994 when a document uh, came upon the scene in the Evangelical world called Evangelicals and Catholics Together. This was basically generated by uh, Charles Coulson and some others uh, pulled together Roman Catholics and quote-unquote evangelical Christians and they came up with a document that essentially said we are to stop evangelizing Roman Catholics and embrace them as brothers. Evangelicals and Catholics together. A long, long list of evangelicals signed that, affirming that they embraced Roman Catholicism, which does not deny grace, but demands works as a true gospel. The fallout of this document still exists today. The fallout of this document still exists today. Still exists today. Who were the key evangelicals behind this ungodly paper, which aims to blur the line between biblical truth and misleading Catholic doctrines? ECT was signed or backed by prominent evangelicals such as Charles Colson, J.I. Packer, Pat Robertson, Bill Bright, Campus Crusade for Christ, Larry Lewis, former Home Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, and Richard Land, President of Southern Evangelical Seminary in North Carolina. Larry Lewis and Richard Land removed their names from the ECT document after severe criticism from SBC members but they maintained that their position toward the ECT document remained unchanged. While on the surface, it may seem like this is a noble cause to put behind us the 500-year-old schisms between the Catholic Church and Protestant Christians, but this is nothing more than Catholicism's attempt to regain her dominance as the mother of all church, which is nothing more than one step closer to a one-world religion which will be headed by no other but the Pope. Welcome to a new world order. Well, here we are. We've just crossed over the threshold of the 500-year anniversary of that great reformation. And as recently as this week, some very popular Protestant televangelists and speakers have said, the Protestant Reformation is over. The things that Martin Luther protested against have not changed. The Catholic Church is still issuing indulgences. People are still praying to idols. Now, the Great Reformation was based upon five major principles. You've heard this before. Sola Scriptura, which means the Bible alone. Solo Gratia, grace alone. Solo Cristo, Christ alone. Sola Fide, faith alone. And Soli Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone. These are the fundamental foundational principles of the Reformation. Why is ECT dangerous? 
It preaches false unity. Let's set aside what divides us and focus on what unites us. Really? What if what divides us is pivotal to the foundation of our Christian faith? Should we ignore it all in the name of false peace and unity? In the words of the great reformer, Martin Luther, peace if possible, truth at all costs. Unquestionably, Christians should and must seek to make peace, as Paul instructs believers in Romans 12 verse 18. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. But seeking peace and focusing on mission must not come at the expense of truth. In other words, believers in one true God, Jesus Christ, must not offer biblical truth at the altar of false peace and unity. The likes of Charles Colson, Richard Land, and other Protestant Christians who have embraced ecumenism should focus on preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ to the Pope and other Catholics. Jesus said in John 10 verse 16, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is the type of unity evangelical leaders must seek, and that is to bring Catholics, Muslims, and other non-believers to the one shepherd who can shield them from the powers of Satan wash their sins, and give them eternal life. By focusing on where Catholics and Evangelicals share common grounds, the Evangelicals may abandon the urgent need to evangelize the Catholics. We understand that people caught up in the Roman system are not saved Christians. They are lost people on their way to eternal hell. We have to continue to evangelize them. We cannot be deceived, we cannot be fooled as if they belong to Christ when in fact they do not. That has been the conviction of the true church for centuries, as you well know. We cannot reach a point now where we redesignate people in the Roman Catholic Church as believers in Christ or we will cut them off from the necessary exposure to the true gospel, which alone can bring them salvation. Finally, we maintain that ECT is purely dishonest at best and simply apostate at worst. Either some of these so-called evangelicals ECT endorsers were ignorant or they were nothing but agents of papacy disguised as evangelicals. True believers in Jesus Christ still need to share the gospel to Catholics for various reasons. It's a horrible thing to see. It's a tragic thing to see. These priests are desperate men. They need salvation. They need Christ. Genuine and discerning believers through all the history of the church and today understand the false priesthood. They understand the heresy of revelation by tradition. They understand the illegitimate power of the magisterium, uh, the, the body of leaders. They understand the idolatry of saint worship. They understand the horrific exaltation of Mary above Christ and even above God. They understand this twisted sacrament of the Mass which uh, attempts to re-sacrifice Christ, false forgiveness of the confessional, the uselessness of infant baptism and the other sacraments, the money motives behind the invention of purgatory as a way to raise money, uh, people giving money to the church to buy uh, their dead relatives out of this imaginary place called purgatory. The true church has always understood the disastrous harm of indulgences the true church has always understood the false works, a righteousness that assumes that you can earn your way into heaven, the abomination of the worship of idols and relics, prayers for the dead, the perversion of forced celibacy. And at the top of the pile, the true church has always understood the Pope as a usurper of the headship of Christ over his church. While this ungodly document was signed back in 1994, we can see the bad fruit it is producing today. More evangelical Christians are softening their stance on Catholicism's deceptive and false theology. Evangelicals must not be deceived by the Jesuit tactic of go for the leaders and the sheep will follow. This tactic appears to be working. Jesuit Pope uses the likes of late Tony Palmer, Kenneth Copeland, and Joel Osteen to deceive Protestant Christians into accepting Catholicism as a genuine Christian denomination. We call on genuine believers in Jesus Christ to pray for our Catholic friends.